Good afternoon. Welcome to the Utah Board of Water Resources board meeting. Today is January 28th, 2021. It is one o'clock p.m. in the afternoon. We would like to welcome you to this board meeting. It is be he being held virtually electronic meeting. To start with, we have a notice that needs to be read. It says, due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the ability of the virus, okay, and the ability of the virus to spread from person to person, the governor has implemented a number of executive orders determined at controlling spread of the virus by minimizing face-to-face -face interactions. Public gatherings are strongly discouraged by the CDC, state of Utah, and local health departments since they facilitate face-to-face -face contact and pose an elevated risk for virus transmission. The Division of Water Resources and the chair of this public body have determined that public gathering at Board of Water Resource meetings presents a substantial risk to the health and safety of those who attend. As such, this meeting will be conducted using a fully electronic format. This meeting format is authorized by recent amendment to the Utah Code and executive order by Utah Governor Gary Herbert and will be temporarily used in place of in-person public meetings that usually occur around the state. Anyone wishing to comment on agenda topics in future meetings or to observe this meeting may do so by logging on to the division's web page at www.water. Dot utah dot gov forward slash comments forward slash links which are provided so with that welcome all board members all those staff members from board of water, from division of water resources and those from the public who are participating in this meeting to start with we will do a roll call of board members starting with Bear River, Charles Holmgren. Mr. Chairman, present. Weber River, Kyle Stevens. Present. Salt Lake, Juliet Tannert. Present. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Present. Green River, Randy Crozier. Present. Upper Colorado River, Norm Johnson. Present. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Present. And my name is Blaine Ipson. I'm currently chair of the Board of Water Resources. I represent the Severe River and, and I am present also. Okay, let's move in to our agenda. But before doing so, let's go through a few logistics just where this is a virtual meeting. Uh, when and if you need to identify when speak please identify who you are so that we can get that recorded correctly in the minutes our voting will of board members will be done by roll call the star six mutes or unmutes phones cell phones the control d will do the same unmute or mute the computers and please keep your mic muted except for when you're speaking uh, so those are just some logistics uh, that we probably need to go through. The first item on their agenda will be the approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we probably need to do. Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's let's have Director Adams, if you would take just a minute and identify the others. We've had a roll call of the board member. Thank you. If you would identify those who are present from the staff and other, if you'd do that, please. Sure, we'll do. I'm Todd Adams. I'm the director of water resources. Others that we have on this call, uh, I will mention. And then we also have others that are out in YouTube land. Um, so we'll, we'll go through the ones that are on this call. Ben Merritt, Billy Sue McNeil, Brett Christensen, Brian Dieter, Director Brian Seed, Candace Hossenjager, Carmen McDonald, Chad Brown, David Lake, Dex Winterton, Dex Winterton, Gene Shawcroft, Jacqueline Pacheco, Joe Williams, Jordan Clayton, Kim Wells, Lindsay Russell, Marcy Larson, Marisa Egbert, 
Marty Bushman, uh, Rachel Shilton, Randy Staker, Russell Hadley, Sam Turpin, Shalane DiBernardi, Todd Stonely, Tom Cox, unknown, I believe, is Jim uh, Lemon, Wade uh, Nightlinger, uh, and Winterton Suites is Randy Crozier. That is the ones. And of course, we have our, our uh, Paul Gedge and our, and our IT folks that are helping us with this. So thank you to them and their efforts in getting this uploaded and, and going. Todd, this wrestler, yeah. his name is Wade Klingler. Klingler? Oh. Okay. Sorry, Wade. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, I noticed uh, Director Adams missed Randy Larson also. Okay. Sorry, Randy. Welcome. Okay. We, we welcome each and every one of you, and, and there may be, as the meeting goes along, uh, others who join or leave. Uh, we welcome each and every one of you and, and appreciate your understanding as we're going through these COVID times. Uh, we... we Earlier met and had a briefing meeting this morning at 10 o'clock and and it as we mentioned there, it will be nice at some point to be able to face to face meet again. But in the meantime, it is amazing that we have this technology and we would also like to thank the IT people, Paul and Carmen and Mike for their support and assistance in this in this matter. And we appreciate each of you being with us today. So the first item on the agenda will be the approval of the minutes. And so board members, you've had a chance to um, review the minutes, go over them. We noted in the meeting this morning, there was one minor correction on the agenda. Um, any comments or discussion on the agenda board members? Mr. Chairman, this is Kyle Stevens. I will move to approve. Uh, we're, we're not quite there yet, Kyle. We'll we'll get there. But do you have any questions before we get there? We have a few other things we have to go through first. Okay, Randy Stakier. Were there any public comments received on the minutes? No, there were not. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're to the point where we can entertain a motion on the minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Kyle. Uh, sorry for getting uh, out of order, uh, but I would make a motion to approve the minutes of the briefing meeting and the uh, board meeting uh, as uh, submitted. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Mr. Chairman, this is Jim Lemon. I'll second it. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Prior to taking a vote on on approving the minutes, uh, is there any further discussion or clarification needed by the board members? Okay, seeing that there are none, we will take a roll call vote on approving the minutes. Bear River, Charles Holmgren. Mr. Chairman, I vote aye. Weber River, Kyle Stevens. Aye. Salt Lake, Juliet Tannert. Aye. Aye. Provo River. Okay, thank you, Juliet. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Aye. Green River, Randy Crozier. Aye. Upper Colorado River, Norman Johnson. Aye. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Aye. Okay, through the roll call vote, it has been unanimous to approve the minutes of the last uh, briefing meeting and, and board meeting. So the motion is carried and approved. Okay, the next thing that we need to do right now is we need to adjust the order of our agenda for the meeting that we're in right now, the board meeting we're in right now. And, and it's been proposed to accommodate schedules to move the inter the portion of the agenda on interstate stream appointments to move it to this point in the agenda right now. We did discuss that this morning in our briefing meeting. Is there any questions or comments, concerns on moving the interstate stream appointment to this portion of the agenda? 
Okay, uh, we'll entertain a motion then to move this, uh, the interstate stream appointment discussion on the agenda to now. Board members, is there anyone willing to make a motion to move it to right now? Mr. Chairman, this is Charles Holmgren. I make a motion that we uh, amend the agenda and place the interstate streams appointments at this point in the agenda. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second on the motion? Norman, I'll second that. Okay, Norm Johnson seconded the motion. Okay, tr prior to taking a vote on the mission, on this motion to amend the, the agenda and move the interstate stream appointments on the agenda, is there any clarification or discussion question from the board members on this? Okay, it doesn't appear that there is, so we'll take a roll call vote. Bear River, Charles Holmgren. Mr. Chairman, I vote aye. Weber River, Kyle Stevens. Aye. Salt Lake, Juliet Tennant. Aye. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Aye. Green River, Randy Crozier. Aye. Upper Colorado River, Norm Johnson. Aye. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Aye. Okay, thank you. The voting is through roll call has been unanimous on amending the agenda to move the discussion on interstate stream, stream appointments to now. So the motion carries. With that, we will go into that item on the agenda now. So we're now at interstate stream appointment. Uh, Director Adams, uh, from staff, we would invite you to give the staff report on this particular item. And Jean Shawcroft has been invited to be with us and is with us. Welcome, Jean. Glad Thank to have you. you. Glad to have you with us today. Uh, we will go to that point right now. So, Director Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, I've got my, my boss here, Brian Steed, if he would like to jump in and, 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 and take this one on, he's welcome to. Um, I can kind of give you some discussion on it. Uh, we talked a little bit this morning about, you know, the new, the new governor in Utah and making a change, and this change will allow us to be more nimble, mobile, and combine our teams together. Uh, Gene and I have talked a lot. We're excited to get working on this. Uh, let me read. Let me read just a part of the um, the appointment letter. And the governor said he was a, pleased to notify the Upper Colorado River Commission that Gene Shawcroft uh, has been selected as Utah's representative on the Upper Colorado River Commission. And the letter kind of goes on to say that he still wants uh, myself, Candace Hossenjager, Teresa Wilhelmson to be alternate commissioners as well as work uh, as some trusted or whatever advisors to Gene and the Colorado River matters at hand. Um, that's where we're at. Um, Brian, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, so my name is Brian Steed. I, it's nice to see you guys. And uh, I, I, before I get into what I was going to say, I just wanted to thank you for your service to the state and the water community. Uh, it's a thankless job. And and I know that we couldn't do our job without you guys doing yours. Um, I wanted to give you a little background in terms of, of what's going on here. I, I think that we all know uh, that we're in for a fight on the Colorado River uh, going forward uh, when we're talking to other states. Um, the governor is aware of that and very much wants Utah to be at the, at the floor and at the table of that fight. Uh, and he sees this as an opportunity to, to increase our amount of firepower uh, by increasing the resources that we have available here. I think there will also be legislation at some point uh, that we see regarding this. I don't know when, when that will happen. Uh, but uh, in his selection process, he went through uh, kind of the number of players that uh, have great reputations in the water community who could, who could help the state out uh, and uh, settled on Gene Shawcroft. Gene, someone who has extensive numbers of years in the water community, has a a uh, stellar reputation as being a man of integrity and, and the type of um, knowledge and wisdom and temperance to really be an effective uh, uh, seat uh, for the state uh, on Colorado River issues. And so that's how that, that selection was made. 
I, I also want to just be very clear, this is not at all a slide on, on Todd or on previous directors. This is simply a, uh, an expansion of the opportunities that, that are in front of us as a state. Todd's done a great job, and there's no feeling that that's the case. And so I just wanted to publicly acknowledge to Todd that you've done a great job uh, and uh, looking forward to working with Gene uh, in, in this capacity as well, and Todd right there with you. Uh, it's kind of a two for one, and I think that's that's a really good opportunity for the state. And with that, I'll stop my blathering besides to say thank you again for your service uh, and thanks for letting me chime in. Thanks, Brian, and, and I will add to that is, you know, we got our hooks into Gene 30 something years ago. Gene, we, we, we got him trained and on his way and, and look now, look where he's at. And so it's awesome and we'll work side by side. We really like Gene and he's, we're, we're excited. Gene and I have talked a lot and we will continue to talk a lot going forward. Thank you, Director Adams and Director Steed. Appreciate that. Uh, I don't have any hooks in Gene myself other than we were both in college together some 39, 40 years ago and, and our wives knew each other in college also. And so I, I go back personally quite a ways with Gene also and, and all of that. Uh, Gene, what, what do you have that you would like to add to the discussion? Well, first of all, um, let me tell you how flattered I am uh, flattered I am to even be in your company. The Board of Water Resources is a board that I've had a lot of respect for for many years, worked, as Todd mentioned, closely with the board for six years uh, right out of college, got a chance to know um, all areas of the state. The, the board members at that time were, were absolutely fabulous. I've watched as new board members have come along over the years. And I agree with uh, Director Steed, the state is very well served by your service. As far as this appointment goes, um, Todd was the only one that put out a campaign sign for me. So uh, I, this, this is unexpected, um, but like you, uh, as the governor has asked you, we're invited you to participate in improving the water communities within our state. I am happy to do so. I'm happy to add whatever uh, level of skill or opportunity I have to this cause. And I would just tell you that I have utmost respect for Todd, worked with him for uh, many years. He and I used to play basketball together at lunch. And I can tell you, I could never ever keep up with the dang guy, but he slowed down since then. So we, we might be somewhere close now. Um, as far as this is concerned, there are many issues that are in front of us. The biggest one is the fact that there is still a lot of unused allocation in Utah to be used, and that's in all parts of the state. Duchesne County Water District has an allocation. Uena County has a water, uh, an allocation. Central still has water that we've yet developed. Washington County with the Lake Valley Pipeline has a, a large block of water. All of those, and there are many, many other smaller ones, but those, those four really are the bigger ones. All of those, in my mind, have to be developed to the fullest extent to allow Utah to do what Utah needs to do. Our population is going to double. We will be stretched at every corner to make sure we have sufficient water for our state. And whether it's Washington County or whether it's Duchesne County, everyone that pulls water off of the river is absolutely critical. We've got to make sure we're united and we're at the table. Um, I'm not quite as, as uh, dramatic as, as Director Steed to say we got a big fight ahead of us, but I can tell you we're gonna have some long, long meetings and discussions in order for that to happen. I'm thrilled that Todd is where he is. This, in my mind, is, is a compliment to Todd to allow him to stay and do everything he and his staff have been doing. I see this as an opportunity to bring additional people, additional resources, additional skills to the table that will simply complement and add to all the good things that are going on in the Division of Water Resources Division of Water Rights, and the department in general. This is, this is 
a full court press on what Utah needs to be in a position to do as we all say wrestle, Brian, instead of fight, okay? As we wrestle, I grew up as a wrestler, so I can say that better. As we wrestle with many, many issues inside our state, but as we do that, we've gotta be completely united as we go outside the state. And, and I see this as an opportunity for us to cr increase that, that uh, probability. And so as you, I'm happy to serve uh, at, the, at the request of the governor. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions you have are fair, they're fair game. Um, Todd and I, as, as he mentioned, have talked an awful lot. We realize that there are gonna be some things we're gonna have to sort through, but the staff he has, the good staff he has, the staff I have, and other resources that we will be able to bring to the table should help us be in a better position as we wrestle with issues into the future. So I'll stop there, but happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Gene. Okay, board members, uh, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask either Director Adams, Director Steed, or, or Gene? Mr. Chairman, this is Randy, if I might jump in. Please. Uh, Gene, um, Good to see you. Just want to appreciate your comments that this is a united effort and that there's lots of diverse water rights throughout the state to pull water off the Colorado and and know that and, and hope that you're willing to help defend each and every water right that's out there, Gene. No, Randy, that's a great question. And I wish I could see your face. I haven't seen you for a while. Your beard's probably down to your belly by now. No, but it's, it's still white, Gene. <laughs> okay. All right. No, uh, Randy, that's a great question. And I, the, the, frankly, the issues that I see on the river are going to be issues that impact the state of Utah with regard to the other states. Our water rights system within the state has a, has a great mechanism for us to deal with water among ourselves. There's a priority system. We have uh, those things well laid out. I see this role as an effort to prepare us to be in a position to maintain central or to maintain Utah's right on the Colorado River. Our allocation is absolutely critical. We need to be able to develop that as a state. And, and again, that goes from the very southwest corner Washington County to the Northeast, um, uh, Duchesne, Daggett counties, everyone that has water on the river needs to be uh, assured that they can use that Colorado River allocation. And, uh, and, and I think that's, that would be my focus. Todd's not gonna let me get far from that. Uh, it's gonna be, it, it, it's gonna be all, all hands on deck to make sure we're prepared to deal with the issues that will impact the river. And for whatever plea I can make, get on your prayer bones and let's get some more snow. That would be the best and quickest solution to this whole thing is if we had 150% snowpack. But as of right now, we're at about 65% uh, around the state and dang, that's just not enough. Appreciate those comments, Gene. and. Uh... You know, man's made his prediction that it's going to be dry, so there's hope that the Lord will just show us how little we know. <laughs> <laughs> we we hope so. We'll hear from Jordan in a few minutes on that, see what magic Jordan can work. I mean, if it was Randy still there, Randy could work us some magic, but Jordan will be counting on you in a few minutes. Uh, one question I had, Gene, and, and this whole thing caught me a little bit off guard, knowing the, the history where the director of water resources uh, has been intimately involved. And I like what I'm hearing that he still will be involved as an alternate in that type of thing. But one of my concerns is sometimes occasionally there are things that, that the board of water resources needs to be involved in to ratify to the, those type of things. And, and I'm curious what your thoughts are and what your plans are as far as communication and making sure that there is a good communication protocol that 
that, uh, you know, all parties that need to be involved are, are involved? That's a, that's a good question too. And, and I can, I can tell you that, <clears throat> that Todd and I were going to rub shoulders an awful lot. He's going to get sick of me. I don't think I'll get sick of him, but he's going to get sick of me. We've got to be in a position where our, our staffs work closely together. And if it's the desire of the board, I'm happy to come to the board meeting, share with you what, what I'm thinking. Todd will have um, an opportunity to do that as well. I don't know that our thinking is going to be much different at all, but I would be happy if, if that's part of something you would like to see happen. Uh, make a make a report to your board uh, on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, semi-annual, whatever you would prefer. I'd be happy to do that if that's something you would like to have done. Okay, thank you. Other board members, anything, any other questions you'd like to ask either Gene or Todd or Brian? Pretty quiet. It sounds like questions have been answered for the time being on that. Uh, Randy Staker, this item on the agenda, were there any public comments received? No, no, Blaine, there weren't. Okay, thank you, Randy. Okay, uh, before we go into the motion component of this, board members, any last discussions? Clarifications, anything you want on this before we entertain a motion? And Mr. Chair, I'm happy to jump off at any time. If you'd like me to jump off uh, while you're having a discussion or a vote, I'm happy to do that. Uh, your pleasure. I think we talked about that in our earlier briefing meeting and we're fine with having you stay on, Gene. Okay, thanks. Okay, hey, board members, anything you want to discuss before we go to the motion portion of this? Okay, we will entertain a motion then on uh, the Governor Cox's recommendation to appoint Gene Shawcroft to the Upper Colorado River Commission. Mr. Chairman, this is Randy. I move the board ratify Governor Cox's appointment of Gene Shawcroft as Utah Commissioner to the Upper Colorado River Commission and alternates Todd Adams, Candace Hoffenegger, and Teresa well Wilson Wilson. Help me out on her name anyway. Will, Will Helmson, the state engineer. Will Helmson, Will Helmson the state engineer. My motion. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I will say that, second Mr. Chairman. All second. Okay, Jim Lemon got on first. J second okay. was by Jim Lemon. Okay, we have a motion and a second to ratify Governor Cox's appointment of Gene to the Upper Colorado, Colorado Commission, and and Randy included in his motion to have Todd and Candace and Teresa as alternates. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Any clarification needed from board? Sounds like there is no further discussion, no clarifications. We will take a roll call vote on this then. Bear River, Charles Holmgren. Mr. Chairman, uh, I've thought long and hard about this and my conscience dis dictates that with my uh, risk of alienating my 30-year friendship with Gene Shawcroft, I don't agree with the appointment by the governor, and uh, I reluctantly vote no. Okay, we have a no vote from Charles. Okay, Weber River, Kyle Stevens. Yes. Salt Lake, Juliet Tannert. Aye. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Yes. Green River, Randy Crozier. Yes. Upper Colorado River, Norm Johnson. Are you with us, Norm? 
Did Norm just drop off? There I am. I vote okay. no. Okay, All we right. have another no vote. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Yes. Okay, we have taken a roll call vote. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven votes. Uh, the ayes voting in favor of ratifying the governor's de decision. There are five. There are two no votes. Motion carries. So the board has voted in favor of ratifying Governor Cox's appointment of Gene to be the commit on the Colorado River Mich Commission. Congratulations, Gene. We look forward to working with you on this important project. Uh, water is the lifeblood of the state and the Colorado River has a huge impact on that affects a large portion of the state. So we look forward to working with you, Gene, and look for great things as as everybody works together on this. Thank you, Gene. Thank you very much. And Charles, this doesn't change my friendship with you. If you're okay with it, I'm good. So <laughs> thank okay. you. I have a tremendous <laughs> amount of respect for you, Gene, especially when we're talking about Lahara and Hereford cattle. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was thinking, it's no wonder, Gene, you got beat by Todd playing basketball. Yeah. If you're a wrestler, no wonder. Be careful. <laughs> in my defense, and, and let me just re rebut that, Gene was so far down the court, he didn't even see me following. That's how fast Gene was. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Was is the, is the word. Okay. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you, Gene. Okay, as part of this same item on the agenda, still we're on the interstate steam stream appointment. Uh, there is also a discussion we need to have now on the Governor Cox's appointment of Todd Adams to the Bear River Commission. So with that, we'll go into a staff discussion first on, on that and Director Todd and and Director Steed, if you would like to to cover that portion of our thing, Brian and Todd. Sure, and Todd, if if you, I've got to jump onto a different call uh, pretty soon. It started a couple minutes ago. I just want to wholeheartedly say how uh, happy we are to have Todd uh, in this role, and uh, we're really excited to see great things on the Bear River. Uh, Todd's been working on this issue for a really long time. Uh, when you talk to the other uh, Bear River commissioners, um, they know and love Todd, and uh, he's been able to do great work for the state. We're happy to see him continue there. So without saying more and having to get too big of an ego, nobody wants that. Uh, I, I will say never let him take you fishing, uh, ever. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's a story associated with that. Uh, he took me fishing and uh, he took me to his spot. And uh, I caught my limit of trees, I'll tell you that much. Uh, perhaps <laughs> over my limit. Uh, so, uh, other than that, I'm happy to, to endorse Todd. So go ahead, Todd. Thanks, Brian. Uh, we did have to call the Division of Wildlife and see how far he was over his limit of twigs and trees and, and snags. So <laughs> we, we had a fun time. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate the support, the, the, the kind words. I've been involved in the bear uh, since 1991-ish. Um, I, I love it. I grew up on it. Uh, I'd be honored if I was ratified to continue to work on that. Uh, it's kind of hard to sit here and listen to this kind of stuff. So anyway, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Director Steed, Director Todd. Uh, board members, do you have any questions or or discussion that you would like to ask Director Brian or Director Todd? Okay, uh, sounds like no, dis no questions from the board. Uh, did we have any public comments regarding this item on the agenda, Randy? No, we did not. Okay, thank you. Okay, prior to taking a, a motion on this particular item, are there any last minute questions, discussion that the board would like to take on this? Doesn't appear like there is, then we'll entertain a motion. 
on this item to ratify Governor Cox's appointment of Todd Adams to the Bear River Commission. Mr. Chairman, this is Charles Holmgren, uh, a board member from the Bear River Basin. And it would be my privilege to nominate Todd Adams to be the uh, central commissioner on the Bear River Commission. Okay, we have a motion. Is the central commissioner, is that the right wording, Todd? No, it's, it's, it's probably as the interstate streams commissioner for the Bear River, but a Bear River commissioner is probably just fine. Okay. Yes, Bear River Commissioner or or interstate interstate streams commissioner for the Bear. Okay. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? This is Kyle. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Board members, is there any further discussion you'd like to have? Do you have any questions on the motion? Need any clarification? I think my clarification I wanted was just how, what wording did we want on the on the motion? It sounds like sounds like we got that covered. Any further clarification or question on the motion, board members? Okay, it doesn't sound like there is, so we will take a roll call vote. Charles Holmgren, vote Bear River. Mr. Chairman, I vote aye. Weber River, Kyle Stevens. Aye. Salt Lake, Juliet Tannert. Aye. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Aye. Green River, Randy Crozier. Aye. Upper Colorado River, Norm Johnson. I vote aye. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Yes. Okay, we have had a roll call vote. Voting has been unanimous to ratify Governor Cox's appointment of, of Todd Adams for the Bear River Commission. Congratulations, Todd. Uh, you and I and I echo and we don't want to stroke your ego or anything, but we really do appreciate you, Todd, and, and all that you do. And I'm sure you'll do a continue to do a wonderful job in that arena. Thank you. So thank Director you so much Steed, for, thank Director you so Steed, much for your support. Yeah, we re excuse Director Steed. He has another commitment now, too. So okay. Moving thank on. Thank you so to much. Head. Sorry, uh oh. Jeremy. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks. Okay, moving on the agenda now, we will go to the NRCS snow report. Jordan. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. All right, can you see my slides? Yes. All right. Um, can you see the presentation or just, I wonder if uh, I'm sharing the wrong screen here, but hopefully uh, this works. I'll maximize this to make sure you can see everything all right. Uh, again, my name is Jordan Clayton. I'm with the NRCS Snow Survey. Uh, thank you again for the time to present on the current snowpack conditions. Right now we're looking at below average uh, conditions for all the major basins in the state of Utah. This is uh, the same story that I presented on last month. I will just mention things have gotten a tiny bit better, uh, but in the meantime, let's just look at this particular map and then I'll compare with where we were just recently. Uh, this shows all the major basins in the state of Utah and the percent normal for the snow water equivalent for those major basins. You can see the dots, those are individual snow tell sites. It's the same as I've reported on before, but just wanted to make sure everyone's familiar with these maps. And of course, you can see the percent normal uh, values. Anything that's in the orange is in the 50 to 70% category, uh, which is actually a little bit better than we were looking just a few days ago. So with that in mind, here's what the situation was like just recently. We again had multiple basins that were below 50%. We've, we've inched up uh, just about 10% in many of those basins and, and are, are doing a little bit better since the uh, recent storms that we've had. But of course, we're still well below what we'd like to see this time of year for our snowpack. I did want to zoom in to some sub basins since we have the ability to uh, report on percent normal for sub basins at this point, which is a recent improvement. Some of you have seen these slides before, or, but the numbers are new, and I want to make sure everyone was familiar with this capability. 
Here's a sub-basin uh, that, uh, excuse me, a series of sub-basins for the Salt Lake area. I'll go to other portions of the state in just a minute. But you can see for these areas that are uh, the Six Creeks area and other local watersheds, uh, what the, the percent normal is for our snowpack as of, uh, again, this morning. Uh, still have a couple sub-basins that are less than 50%. The major basins are the ones that are all above 50% at this point. Going to the northern half of the state, you can again see where things stand. There are a couple of sub-basins, particularly the north slope of the Uintas that are, uh, have fared a little bit better, uh, but most of the state is again in that 50 to 70% category in terms of percent normal for the snowpack. Going down now to the southern portion of the state, very similar story, but a little bit worse, although there's been a couple uh, um, sites that definitely felt some improvement from the recent storms. I'll talk a little bit more about that with this next slide. Here's where we're at right now. We're currently at roughly 60% of normal with our snowpack. I talk about these uh, rainbow graphs every time I present, and I just wanna make sure everyone's familiar with how to read these. The current water year is shown with the black line, and what's normal based on the previous 30 years of observations is the green line, and then the color shading for the rainbow is the different percentiles. So we don't wanna be in that bottom, uh, sort of pinkish red color, that's the bottom 10th percentile, but that's still where we are in terms of our snowpack. Again, we are in the, uh, the bottom 10th percentile. In fact, we're at the fifth percentile of, of our overall um, snowpack condition. We can project these uh, conditions forward based on what we've seen over the last 30 years, and that's what's shown with these different colors of spaghetti, if you will, moving forward. Uh, what what the the uh, the lines show is the previous observations that we've had based on uh, all the observations from today's date moving forward. And what we can do with the graph like this is we can see if we have essentially a normal remainder of our winter moving forward, where are we going to land by the time we get to our peak snowpack? Um, or if we get to the worst conditions that we've seen from January 28th moving forward, it would be the bottom red line. Best conditions moving forward would be the upper purple line. And to be a little bit more specific about that, what we're looking at in, in terms of the most likely outcome is that middle green line. And if that happens, we'd end up with that lower of the two blue arrows that I have here. It says the most likely max SWE, which would be about six and a half inches more than current, would land us right at around the upper portion of that uh, 10 to 30th percentile part of the distribution. So we'd still be well below normal. We'd unfortunately still have a pretty disappointing snowpack but at least we'd be a little bit better off than we are right now. In order to reach what we would consider a, a typical snowpack peak, we would need roughly 10 inches of additional snow water equivalent to, uh, to land in the state by around April 1st. And that's that upper arrow. Also looking at precipitation across the state, this is essentially the same map, but now just looking at precipitation. So any kind of snow rain mix since the beginning of October when our water year started, um, some very disappointing levels of precipitation you can see for the sub-basins across the state. Same color scheme. Here's where we're at in terms of our overall combined value. We're at about 56% of average overall, and we're still in that bottom uh, portion of the distribution. This is where I'm, uh, I, I would say that I'm frankly most alarmed. Our soil moisture uh, right now is extraordinarily dry. And the reason why this is so alarming is that we're really going to be impacting the efficiency of our snowmelt runoff next spring when all that snow melts. So uh, as I've been saying, we really need to get an above average snowpack just to get reasonably uh, um, average runoff. And we're not unfortunately anywhere near there right now. Uh, what's shown here are not only the, um, the soil moisture values at our snow tell sites, but also soil moisture values from our scan sites in the valley locations. And I put the basins on here as well, just so we can see when we integrate across the basins what those soil moisture levels look like. And again, we're, we're way below normal. We're below 50% for many of the basins across the state. When we integrate for the entire state, we can see the current line is that black line. You can see we're well below what we've uh, witnessed in the previous 15 to 20 years of observations. This is sort of uncharted territory in terms of soil moisture dryness. And again, the, the really the take home part of that is that we're we're not going to see as much runoff from the same amount of snow that we would have seen in a year when we had normal soil moisture. And that, of course, is alarming when we consider our, our reservoir filling and, and water that we need for our state. As a result, our streamflow forecasts have been downgraded. Uh, we're going to have new streamflow forecasts in about a week. 
but in the meantime, this is the values from the beginning of January. They haven't uh, in, in all likelihood changed much. And you can see again, the same color scheme, their stream flow forecast at our forecast points are uh, well below what we would like to see and, and very disappointing. Our reservoir levels across the state are also down significantly from where they were last year. Uh, reservoir storage is currently at about 63% of capacity. Again, these numbers will be updated in a few days. Uh, that's down 15% from last year, and you can see for the different basins of interest uh, how much down the, uh, the reservoir storage is, with the green line being last year and the blue line being this year for those, for those given basins. I show the forecast and the reservoirs in particular because when we combine those, we get these surface water supply indices. And again, what we do with these indices is we combine what we expect in terms of the runoff and in a volume from April to July. That we combine with the current reservoir storage to get an overall volume of water. And then we compare that with the previous 30 years to see how much surface water um, we expect to have available for the state relative to what we've seen in the past. And we typically will see one or two basins show up as uh, highlighted in red, being alarmingly low. Unfortunately, this year we see the majority of the basins in the state fall into that category, which is, um, uh, like I've been saying, um, pretty concerning. Probably already familiar with the drought condition in the state. Uh, we have about 70% of the state that's currently in the worst drought category, D4. And if we accelerate up to the D3 or D4, we're at about 90% of the state. 97% of the state at uh, D2 to D4, severe, extreme, or exceptional drought. So this is pretty serious. Uh, but since you asked for some Randy-type magic, I, I did my best and I pulled the, uh, the graph for the six to 10 day outlook from NOAA. Um, so they get the credit for this. And we do have an optimistic uh, forecast for the next 10 days anyway. I, I can't project farther than that and neither can they really. Um, but anyway, for the next six to 10 days, things are looking a little bit better. Um, but we're going to need a lot more than just uh, a, a few more storms to get back to where we need to be with our snowpack. Thank you again for uh, allowing the time to present on the snowpack uh, conditions right now. This is a kind of depressing picture that I took from the top of Grantsville Reservoir, looking out toward the backside of the Oakers. Um, and uh, anyway, there's my contact information. Please let me know if there are questions. I'm happy to uh, help answer those. Thank you. I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, not an overly bleak, it, well, it is an overly bleak, not a very bright picture, is it? That one thing that you show with the extreme drought for the whole state, that's pretty sobering, that one really, page. I apologize. Yeah, it really is very sobering, as are the soil moisture and the snowpack conditions. I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to turn things around, but I, I, don't, have, <laughs> I don't have that power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Board members, any questions for Jordan? Well, Jordan, we appreciate your efforts. Uh, Randy, was there any public comments on this? We, we don't have any voting or anything, but were there any public comments other than weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth? <laughs> that was all. <laughs> <laughs> that was all. <laughs> well, th thank you very much, Jordan. We appreciate you and your efforts. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Let's moving on the agenda. The next item on our agenda will be our feasibility reports. We have project number RE443, which is Sunrise and Bench Ir Creek Irrigation Company. This is in Wasatch County. And so we will have a feasibility report. Uh, Russell Hadley with the Water Resources is the project manager. And if we can invite uh, those who are here from Sunrise and Bench Irrigation, Creek Irrigation Company. I, I know Wade is here. Is anyone else here from, from the company? Is Billy or Brian here? Billy, Sue, and Brian Dieter are both here. Okay, so we have Wade Klingler as president of the company, Billy Sue McNeil as secretary, and Brian Dieter of JUB Engineering. Welcome to each of you. And we'll first hear a presentation from uh, Russell on this, on this project. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, proposed project is located in Woodland in Wasatch County. The applicant irrigates approximately 430 acres with water from the Provo River, 
with the main transmission line being 70-year-old corrugated metal pipe. I'll refer to that as CMP from here on out. Uh, there's also about 10,300 feet of unlined earthen canal ditch below the CMP. Most of the farms are irrigated with privately owned pumps, providing pressurized water to wheel lines. And they have never received funding from the board before. And that's interesting because they uh, have an 1885, all their water rights are 1885 uh, decreed water rights. <clears throat> they have an early priority on the Provo River. They've been around a long time. Okay, uh, Shalane, could you go to the next slide, please? Or Jacqueline, thank you. Okay, the applicant's CMP was severely damaged by a rock slide near the inlet and is in danger of completely failing. If they lose the pipeline, they will have no water supply. Let's go to the next slide, please. Here's a hole, a rock came down and punched a hole right into the pipe, kind of pushing down on the whole pipeline there. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. Okay, here's the, you can see the slide here again on top of the uh, pipeline. Next slide, please. Okay, here's their diversion <clears throat> up on the Provo River. You can see the river, this a few years back, the river was running really high. Uh, they have some boulders in the river that uh, help check the water over to their diversion. And it has uh, stop logs to control the uh, amount coming into the canal. And that's actually the president, Wade Klingler there in his waders. Uh, he's doing something with some plastic sheeting to try to cut back the flow coming into their canal. Uh, next slide. Oh, and this uh, diversion, apparently it's working very well. Nothing needs to be done to it. Okay, this is the intake to their current CMP pipe. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, President, this is uh, his buffalo, his bison ranch. He uh, runs Buffalo Run Ranch, <laughs> and uh, you can see that's one of their products. You could go to the next slide, please. Okay, this is just another uh, view of the buffalo. Uh, on the left there, you can see that is Bench Creek there. And this company, even though they're small, they're a little bit different. They uh, have some different products. They raise bison. They have one member who... Uh, produces artisan cheeses, and they also produce choke cherry jam. And in fact, they have a choke cherry festival in Woodland every year. I've never had choke cherry before this. It's kind of a different kind of flavor to it. Very good. Okay. Uh, the applicant is requesting financial assistance from the board to replace the deteriorated CMP with 7,800 feet of 26 inch PVC pipe and install a new inlet screening structure. A master meter will also be installed. They plan to pipe the entire system eventually, but presently only want to replace the damaged 7,800 foot section. And design and construction engineering services will be provided by JUB engineers. Benefits of the project include conservation of a, about 430 acre feet, better ability to monitor water use, reduced operation and maintenance costs, and reduced impacts of drought. Okay, as shown in the cost estimate, the estimated cost of the project is 1,220,000. Recommended cost sharing and repayment are as shown, uh, board providing 580,000, a WaterSmart grant that has already been awarded of $538,000 and the applicant providing $102,000 with a total cost of project of $1,220,000. Staff recommends the board authorize 47.6% of the project cost up to $580,000 and that the project be purchased at 0% interest over 25 years with annual payments of approximately 23,200. That is staff's report. Thank you, Russell, I appreciate that. Okay, uh, 
either Wade or Billy Sue or Brian representing the applicant. Do you have anything that you would like to add to the presentation that Russell just gave? And if you do, please identify yourself. Wade or Billy Sue or Brian. This is Brian. I don't have anything to add. Okay. What about you, Wade or Billy Sue? Anything? This is Wade. Sorry, get to, couldn't get my mic to work, but uh, yeah, I appreciate that, Russell. Um, I really don't have anything to add. He did a great job. Okay. Thank you. Uh, board members, do you have any questions that you would like to ask either Wade or Billy Sue or Brian regard or Russell? regarding this project. Mr. Chairman, this is Charles Holmgren. Uh, I thought I heard Russell say that the inlet structure was in uh, good operating condition, yet I see we have a $125,000 charge for the inlet structure. Will you please explain? Yes, <clears throat> actually that original diversion structure is what was in good shape. Uh, a little confusion as to what the inlet structure was to start with, but the inlet structure, is, if we wanna go back and look at the pictures, we can show it to you again. Uh, the inlet structure is uh, just uh, a few more. Right there. There we are, that's, okay, there's their diversion. Apparently the diversion's in good shape. Uh, they ever want to come back and rebuild that? Or would be interested in uh, entertaining that. But uh, the next slide is the inlet structure, okay. and that'll be where the pipe is starting. And there's going to be a, a wedge wire screen, a Coanda screen. Uh, they work very effective. There's going to be a concrete inlet structure there. Hey Charles, this is Brian. Um, yeah, well, there'll be a, a screening structure there at the, at the head of the pipe, same place as this trash rack is right now. Uh, there's no way to regulate the flow out of the river at that diversion. Um, but now we'll have a valve and a meter at this location. We'll be able to send this water back to the river at this location. Anything that's not taken by the pipe, it will be screened and the excess sent back to the river. Okay, thank you. One, one quick question. Uh, I looked at design and construction engineering was about 13% of the project cost. Does getting involved with the Water Smart grant make that higher? Yeah, we've already spent a lot of that getting that Water Smart and all that planning that has to be done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good questions, Charles. Other questions from the board? Okay, if not, then Randy Staker, were any public comments received on this project? Uh, no, there were not. Okay, thank you, Randy. Okay, prior to entertaining a motion on this, are is there any clarification, additional comments from either the board members or the applicants on this project that you'd like to bring up prior to when we entertain a motion? Yeah, this Wayne, I just like to say, uh, went up and met with them. Uh, it was a wonderful afternoon, beautiful place up there. And I don't know that I've seen a project uh, that is more deserving than this, even though it's a small company and so forth. It, uh, it it's a matter of life for them, and it it's one of the better projects that we can be involved in. And what really put it over the top for me was the choke cherry jam. <laughs> <laughs> that choke cherry jam, huh? <laughs> Is it similar to elderberry jam? I've had elderberry. I've never had choke cherry jam. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that, but the choke cherry jam was really good. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Okay, any further questions, clarification from either the directors or applicants? Okay, doesn't appear there are. Okay, we'll entertain a motion then on this. Hey, this is Wayne. 
And I move that the board authorize 47.6% of the project cost up to $580,000 and that the project be purchased at 0% interest over 25 years with annual payments of approximately $23,200. Okay, do we have a motion? Do we have a second? This is Norm and I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion from Wayne, a second from Norman. Prior to taking a vote, board members, any clarification or questions that you have on the motion? Okay, it doesn't sound like there are any, so we will take a roll call vote. Bear River, Charles Holmgren. Mr. Chairman, I vote aye. Weber River, Kyle Stevens. Aye. Salt Lake, Juliet Tannert. Aye. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Aye. Green River, Randy Crozier. Aye. Upper Colorado River, Norm Johnson. Aye. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Yes. Okay, we've had a roll call vote. The voting has been unanimous in favor of approving this project on, on the terms. Uh, congratulations, Wade, Billy Sue, Brian. We wish you luck on your project, and it sounds like a good project. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank oh. you. You bet. Okay, next item on our agenda, we have some special items with three different projects. The first project is number RC059. It is Moon Lake Water Users Association. This is in Duchesne County. The project manager is Ben Merritt. It looks like we have uh, Dex Winterton, the manager, and Kurt Christensen, the board president, with us. Uh, welcome. Uh, ben Merritt will be giving the presentation. So again, when you speak, unmute your mic and identify yourself. So Ben, take her away. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the Moon Lake Water Users Association is bringing Twin Pot Dam for the board. This dam is located on the southern slope of the UN Mountains. It was constructed in 1931. At its crest, the dam is 38 feet tall, 515 feet long, and reaches an elevation of 7,638 feet. And the dam impounds approximately 4,600 acre feet of water. Um, I have some uh, some photos here of the of construction, which is now complete. This first photo that you see shows uh, the HDPE pipe, which is being fused together right before being pushed into the dam outlet structure by that uh, um, that oh, the <laughs> that cat right there. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a photo of the, the same pipe. Uh, this uh, structure was was uh, was damaged and they pumped grout in uh, around the pipe after they uh, slip lined the tunnel. Next slide, please. This is the inlet, so the upstream side. Uh, they, the inlet structure and the outlet, stru outlet structure were both replaced as part of this project. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, they just uh, bolt the pipe on there, put up, some, put up some forms, dump a bunch of rebar in there and pour concrete all over the top. Next slide, please. And there you go. That's the finished product right there. Uh, you see the, you can see the gate there inside the trash rack. And then the pipes up above are, are, are for a vent and then for control of, of that gate valve. Next slide, please. There's the there's the vent and the and the control uh, line again. They they and the, on the right you can see they poured concrete over the top and etched in marks to that act as a staff gauge. Next slide. They also rebuilt the uh, control structure at the top of the dam. 
Next slide. This is the downstream side of the outlet. So this is after they slip lined the tunnel and grouted it. Uh, next slide. You can see once again, they put up some forms, tossed a bunch of rebar in there. Next slide. And they pour concrete all the top and that's what you get. Next slide. So the, the, so the, the project is completed at this point in time. Um, the, they came in slightly over budget. And this was primarily due to the fact that when the bids were received for the project, they came in uh, slightly above what was expected. Uh, so the total project cost came to $296,000. Staff recommends that the board commit an additional $59,400 and amend the agreement to provide 90% of the project cost up to $266,400 as a down safety grant. And that is staff's report. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, from the applicant from Moon Lake Water Users, Dex or Kurt, do you have anything you would like to add to what Ben has presented? I, I don't think there's too much to add. Just want to say thank you for allowing us this opportunity to upgrade our storage. It, you know, it provides a lot of water for us and that's what we depend on. Uh, we appreciate your support in this. Okay, thank you. Board members, uh, do you have any questions that you would like to ask either Dex or Kurt or Ben regarding this project? This is Norman. I'm curious as to what the payments will be. Uh, this is a this is a grant, uh, and then the ten percent of the so nine, the ninety percent of the project was a grant. The ten percent was financed by Moon Lake Water Users Association, so there will not be a payment on on this project. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's a good point. This is one of the one of the grants for dam safety type thing with a 90%. So good question, though. Thank you. Any other questions or for the applicants or discussion from the board members? Mr. Chairman, this is Randy. Randy, go ahead. I just like to make the comment that you know, all these dam safety projects that have been done throughout the state are a great benefit to the water users that are served by them. And uh, just glad to see that Moon Lake was able to get twin pots repaired so it can continue to function and serve the water users in our area. But uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Randy. Wonderful comment. And, and thank goodness for reservoirs and dams, especially in times like what we're in. They are truly a great asset to our state. Uh, Randy Staker, were there any public comments received on this project? No. Okay, thank you, Randy. Okay, prior to entertaining a motion on this project, board members, any last thoughts questions discussion that come to mind okay it sounds like not we'll entertain a motion then on this project mr chairman this is randy i i move the board commit an additional fifty nine thousand four hundred dollars and amend the agreement to provide ninety percent of the project cost up to two hundred sixty six thousand four hundred as a dam safety grant. Okay, thank you, Randy. We have a motion. Do we have a second on the motion? Mr. Chairman, this is Jim Lemon. I will second that motion. Okay, thank you, Jim. We have a motion and we have a second. Prior to taking a roll call vote, is there any from the board, any clarifications, discussions, questions on the motion? Okay, let's take a vote then. Charles Bear River, Charles Holmgren. Mr. Chairman, I vote aye. 
Weber River, Kyle Stevens. I vote aye. Salt Lake, Juliet Tannert. Aye. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Aye. Green River, Randy Crozier. Aye. Upper Colorado River, Norm Johnson. I vote aye. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Yes. Okay, we've had a roll call vote. The voting has been unanimous in favor of approving this project uh, on the terms present proposed presented. So it motion passes. Congratulations, Dex and Kurt. Good luck. Uh, your project's completed. Good luck on getting it filled up this winter. I guess is where we where we need the additional thing, and hopefully your your reservoir will fill for you and things will function properly for a long time to come. Congratulations. Yes, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Todd, it appears we just lost Blaine. <laughs> All right, uh, we have lost our fearless uh, leader. Uh, let's, there he is. We made we made Kyle's uh, heart skip a beat for just a second, so we're glad to have Blaine back. <laughs> I hit the wrong key. I was going for the unmute key, and I hit the get out of the program key. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was user error on my part. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, the Vice Chairman and I were both uh, our hearts skip a beat. We were looking for you, so we're glad well, you're back. Yeah, I, I I was trying to hit the unmute, and right next to my unmute button is the leave the call button. <laughs> so my my mouse didn't go right where I wanted it to go. I'm glad to be back. So anyway, congratulations on Moon Lake with, with their project with the unanimous vote. The next item on our agenda under special items is Pioa South Bench Canal and Irrigation Company. This is located in Summit County. Uh, Jacqueline will give the is the project manager and will give the staff presentation on that. Uh, my understanding is that we have Dave Lake, president <laughs> with us, Sam Turpin, secretary with us, and Brian Dieter of JUB Engineering with us as well. So we welcome all of you and we will have Jacqueline give the presentation first. Again, we ask that each of you, when when you want to give some input, uh, identify yourself. So Jacqueline. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. This project is located near Oakland City in Summit County, and it was authorized in January of 2019. The board committed $1 million in August 2020 towards the applicant's original project, which was to replace approximately 3.3 miles of canal system with a pressurized pipeline, construct a new screening structure and metering station, and the contract was completed in November of 2020. So this is this is a map of the original board project. Next slide, please. In addition to the board's project, the applicant has been working on a project to replace laterals. Um, they received approximately $890,000 in grants for the lateral projects. Both projects are going to are going to cost more than originally estimated. Therefore, they would like to expand the scope of the board's project to include this um, additional project and request those additional funds. So this is a this is a map of the of the new project that combines both of them. Um, next slide, please. The original project was um, estimated at two million two hundred forty six thousand with the board uh, with a committed board share of a million dollars or 44.5%. The updated estimated project cost is $3,843,000 with a proposed board cost share of $1,660,000 or 43.2%. Therefore, they're asking an addition for an additional $660,000. Staff recommends the board 
reauthorize the project to provide 43.2% of the project cost up to $1,660,000 and amend the purchase agreement to state the board will provide $1 million to be returned at 0% interest over 30 years with annual payments of approximately $33,300. And in addition, the board commit $660,000 um, from the CND fund to be returned at 0.1% interest over 30 years with annual payments of approximately $22,400. That is staff's report. Thank you, Jacqueline. I appreciate that. Uh, Dave or Sam or Brian, do you have anything that you would like to add to the report which Jacqueline has? Yeah, this is David Lake. Uh, the reason we split this up into two projects was so that we could uh, go with the uh, uh, two different um, agencies to get some grant money. And so we brought on the NRCS for the uh, lateral projects, which helped us considerably. The, the other thing I'd like to make note that this is uh, this projects, we really have put in the best stuff we could come up with. We put the HDPE on the main line and we're putting C900 on our lateral lines because we felt it was a better pipe. The cost difference was not so much that it uh, uh, affected us too much. It was about a $40,000 difference for the C900 over pit. And the uh, also we incorporated in all our laterals, every property has a, uh, an electronic meter with the ability to be read on the cell phone with telemetry. And so meters have been installed or going to be installed on this whole project. And so I just wanted to kind of bring that up and I'll answer any questions if you got, but I'll sign off. Thank you, David. Uh, Sam or Brian, do you have anything you would like to add? Uh, this is Brian. I don't have anything to add, but I'd be glad to answer any questions anyone might have. Okay, we'll get to that point in just a minute. Um, okay, we have a raised hand. Marisa, you've got your hand raised. You got something? I'm Marisa? sorry, that that's an accident. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so board members, we're to the point now where do you have any questions that you would like to ask either David or Sam or Brian or Jacqueline regarding this project? Uh, this is Kyle. Uh, I'll just uh, make a comment, compliment them for being forward thinking and uh, taking advantage of the uh, technology out there with uh, metering uh, to help them become a little bit more efficient. Um, and then, David, what is the difference between the uh, pipe that you uh, talked about there relative to uh, one being better than the other? The C9. This is Brian. Oh, okay, this is Brian. Brian. Go ahead and address that. So, uh, C900 is what you typically see in uh, as it's PVC pipe that you see in culinary systems throughout the state um, in city streets. PIP is what you generally see. It's a much thinner wall uh, pipe that you see in irrigation systems. Um, this ground is continually developing. I don't know how many times we've had lots uh, properties split since we've started design of this, but we were thinking that at some point, a lot of these pipes are going to be in city streets. And so we didn't want to put, um, you know, the inferior, thin walled pit pipe, you would never put that in a city street. So that was part of the, the thinking, but the C900 is a much thicker PVC pipe, a much better product. That's what Dave's referring to. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions, board? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, this is Charles Holmgren. I just have a question as to whether uh, they anticipate lowering their regular uh, uh, operating costs with these uh, improvements. Uh, this is David Lake. Yes, uh, when we originally uh, ran our study on air, we have a 48% water loss with our open canal. 
And so, and it's been very inefficient to flood irrigate. So by going to the pressurized sprinkler system, for example, my pumping costs are around two to three thousand dollars a year, and that'll go away for me uh, eventually as we get this paid for. One other thing I'd like to mention that we're hoping that we, in some of the water savings we're doing, we have some Echo Reservoir water, and we're looking at trying to lease those shares to help pay more of our share of this and pay our loan down. Uh, we're trying to do everything we can to uh, take the burden off of the shareholders for this, but the project really is needed. Our canal uh, was dangerous uh, last summer. We actually had a breach in our canal that went down on a, on a public hideaway and was pouring water down there. Uh, we've worried because of people building around it uh, of uh, children getting in and having a loss of life. And so this really is uh, uh, an important project. And as we go back and as we talked about with the pipe, we decided we only wanted to do this once. And so we went with the best we could get. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, Randy Staker, were any public comments received on this project? There were no public comments. Okay, thank you, Randy. Okay, board members, prior to entertaining a motion, do you have any last thought of questions or discussions on this project? <clears throat> Doesn't sound like there are any, so we will entertain a motion on this project then. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Kyle Stevens. I represent that area, and it was uh, my privilege and opportunity to spend some time with them up there when the project was first being uh, uh, put together. And uh, so, again, I just compliment them on their forward thinking and uh, looking to utilize the, the best technology that's out there. And, and uh, do it once, <laughs> so to speak, and as uh, kind of paraphrasing what David said there. So I would make the motion that the board reauthorize the project to provide 43.2% of the project cost up to $1,660,000 and amend the purchase agreement to state the board will provide $1 million to be returned at 0% interest over 30 years with annual payments of approximately $33,300, and in addition, the board commit $660,000 from the C&D fund to be returned at 0.1% interest over 30 years with annual payments of approximately $22,400. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second on this motion? This is Norman. I will second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Kyle made the motion, Norman seconded the motion. Prior to voting on the motion, are there any questions from the board or clarifications needed on this motion? <clears throat> okay, we will take a roll call vote then. Bear River, Charles Holmgren. Mr. Chairman, I vote aye. Weber River, Kyle Stevens. Aye. Salt Lake, Juliet Tannert. Aye. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Aye. Green River, Randy Crozier. Aye. Upper Colorado River, Norman Johnson. Aye. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Yes. Okay, we've taken a roll call vote. The voting is unanimous. So this motion passes as, as given. Uh, we congratulate you, David, Sam, and Brian on this, and we wish you luck with this project. Looks like a good project, and, and hopefully it will turn out exactly like you hope. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys and your support. You've been very good to us. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next item on the agenda under special items is project RE429. This is 
The applicant is Cove Waterworks Company. It is in Cache County. Tom Cox from the Water Resources staff is the project manager. And my understanding is that Brett Christensen, board member, and Randy Larson, secretary, are in attendance. It is Chad Brown with engineering from France and Civil? Is, is Chad on the call as well? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, I see you now, Chad. I, yep, you're there. Okay, so we welcome you, Brett, Randy, and Chad. And Tom, uh, we'll have you give the presentation, please, Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Back in October of 2019, Cove Waterworks Company came before the board for funds for a project to make improvements to its spring as well as replace uh, about two thirds of its old two inch uh, galvanized steel pipe main transmission line into town. The spring work has been completed and the pipeline work was tailing a little bit behind that. Originally, it was proposed, you look on the kind of the, the left part of the, the map where the red dashed line crosses the field. It was originally proposed that the new pipeline follow the alignment of the, the old one. However, uh, once the design is completed and it looked like there were going to be some air relief valves in the middle of that field, it was decided to take the, the pipeline around along the existing road. So if you look at the map, it's that darker blue line. Uh, because of this and the need to uh, cross the road a couple more times and make some improvements to the, the residential connections, the project cost went up. Can you change the slide? So the project cost went up about $75,000. And so the applicant is before the board today to request some additional funds. Uh, it's proposed that the board commit an additional $63,700 and amend the purchase agreement to state that the board will provide 85% of the project cost up to $276,200 and that the project be purchased at 0% interest over 30 years with annual payments of approximately $9,200. And that's basically the same uh, repayment schedule other than uh, the annual payments will be higher. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, that's staff's report. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Uh, Brett or Randy or Chad, do you have anything you would like to add to what Tom has given? This is this is Chad Brown. I don't have anything to add. Okay. What you, Brett or Randy, anything? This is Brett. Um, we just really appreciate you guys working with us. You do a tremendous uh, job in the state. We really appreciate it and appreciate you working with us on this and the system has uh, been a great improvement to our our town okay thank you um, board members do you have any questions that you'd like to ask Brett or Randy Chad or Tom regarding this project Doesn't sound like we have any questions. Uh, Randy Staker, were any public comments received on this project? No comments. Thank you, Randy. Okay, prior to entertaining a motion, board members, any last minute, last thoughts, questions, discussion you want on this project? Okay, I'll entertain a motion now then on this project. Mr. Chairman, this is Charles Holmgren and I will make a motion that the board commit 
an additional $63,700 and amend the purchase agreement to state the board will provide 85% of the project cost up to $276,200 and that the project be purchased at 0% interest over 30 years with annual payments of approximately $9,200. Thank you, Charles. We have a motion. Do we have a second on the motion? Mr. Chairman, this is Jim Lemon. I will second that. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second on the motion. Prior to taking a vote, any questions, clarification on the motion, board members? Okay, it doesn't look like there's any questions or clarifications. Take a roll call vote then. Bear River, Charles Holmgren. Mr. Chairman, I vote aye. Weber River, Kyle Stevens. Aye. Salt Lake, Juliet Tannert. Aye. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Aye. Green River, Randy Crozier. Aye. Upper Colorado River, Norman Johnson. I vote aye. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Yes. Okay, we've had a roll call vote. Voting has been unanimous in favor of approving this project with the terms outlined in the motion and the staff's recommendation. Congratulations, Brett, Randy, and Chad. We wish you luck on this project. Looks like a good one. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate your time. And uh, I would just continue to, to say, keep harassing Todd on his, his basketball game. We think that's great. <laughs> we thought that uh, the harassment on on uh, basketball only happened in our office, but uh, I'm glad to see that you guys give Todd such a hard time. So keep it up. <laughs> thanks, Chad. Yeah, yeah you bet, Todd. take care. <laughs> Th thanks, appreciate it, you guys. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, this is, it's been a real good project for us to get done and uh, appreciate all your help that, uh, that we've had from you guys. Thanks, Randy. Good luck on things. Okay, next item on our agenda, we did receive since the last board meeting a new application. It's Project RE445. It's for Veo Culinary Water Association. It's in Washington County. And, and so we do have that, pro, that, that application. Uh, staff will be reviewing it and coming up with recommendations and meeting with the applicant. Tom Cox has been assigned to be the project manager over this. So at some future, uh, what board meeting, I'm sure we'll be hearing more on this particular uh, application. Next item on our agenda, well, and I guess, Randy, we can ask you, we're, we're not taking any board application on this new application at this time, but did we receive any public comments on this, Randy? No. Okay, thank you, Randy. Okay, planning report is the next item on the agenda. Uh, first item uh, on our planning report, there's a watershed council report and Rachel Shilton from staff will be giving that update. So Rachel. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for this opportunity to uh, speak about the watershed councils. I am Rachel Shilton, manager of the River Basin Planning Section at the Division of, the Water, of Water Resources. And this presentation is a progress report on the implementation of the Watershed Councils Act, which is UCA 7310G Part 3. A committee was created to draft the watershed uh, bill sponsored by Representative Tim Hawks. Bill describes each regional watershed area which are generally the same as the division's basin boundaries, with just two exceptions, in the Severe River Basin and Utah Lake Basin. The severe, severe River watershed, only the portions of Kane, Garfield, Wayne, Paiute, Emory, Severe, Sam Pete, Carbon, Utah, Juab, Tooele, Milford, or Millard, and Beaver counties, so most of that whole southern and, and west part of the state, uh, drains to Severe River. 
this description is different than the water or than the basins because it does exclude the western section of the Severe River Basin from the regional Severe River Watershed boundary. The Utah Lake Watershed portions of Utah County of Utah, Wasatch, Juab, and Summit counties that drain to Utah Lake are included in the Utah Lake. Uh, watershed area. And the difference here is where drainages um, flow to the Jordan River from the Utah County area are not included in the Utah Lake watershed area. The bill was enacted in 2020 by the Utah legislature and the act creates these watershed councils at both the state and region levels. The state water, uh, state level watershed council is under the Department of Natural Resources, and it consists of up to 28 members. Six of them, those members are from state agencies. Eight members represent a variety of interests in the watershed, and an additional 12 representatives, one from each of the regional watershed councils, uh, comprise the State Watershed Council. Division is charged with facilitating and organizing the state, uh, regional, state and regional watershed councils, and with the intended results that the watershed councils will facilitate discussion of watershed issues, they'll improve communication, will engage stakeholders, and minimize duplication of efforts and resources used within those watersheds. These councils create an opportunity to bring existing watershed groups into a common, con a common conversation regarding their watershed area. A schedule to organize uh, the watersheds was to have the state council organized by July 1st, 2020. Uh, we all are aware of what happened with the pandemic and so that postponed our efforts to start organization of the state council. Uh, in that interim period, the division recognized that we lacked the personnel to accomplish the facilitation tasks within the mandated time. So the division solicited for a statement of quali qualifications for watershed council facilitation. And the contract was recently awarded to the Langdon Group. The contract was ex executed this month um, and it continues through January 3rd, 2026. The contract administrator within the division is Assistant Director Todd Stoneley, and the consultant manager is Dan Adams. The contract timeline calls for kickoff meeting, which has already occurred uh, in 2020, 2021, along with uh, conversations to build an understanding of the objective for watershed councils, create a project plan, project schedule, and an implementation plan to organize the state level council and work with two additional region, regions to facilitate the organization within those uh, regions. In 2022, uh, the plan is to incorporate lessons learned from both the state watershed council organization and the two uh, regional watershed councils and incorporate those for lessons learned toward the um, organization of six additional watershed councils in 2022. 2023, again, we will implement, or we will uh, learn from the organization of those now eight regional councils and incorporate changes, lessons learned, and we will attempt to organize the additional councils uh, in other regions throughout the state. Uh, at that point during 2023, they'll revisit any watersheds that were not interested in organizing a regional council when they were first approached. In 2024, they will complete the organization of councils. Uh, they will compile the project report and prepare a presentation for the legislative interim committee. In 2025 through 2026, they'll complete all of the watershed coordinations 
um, and follow up with facilitation of getting those councils organized and operating independently. The act provides a review for watershed councils by the Natural Resources, Agriculture and Environment Interim Committee to begin on or before October 1st of, uh, of 2024. And the review will be completed before September 30, 2025. This completes my report for the watershed councils. Does the board have any questions? Any questions board members for Rachel? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Kyle. Uh, just curious as to why they made exceptions to the watershed boundaries for the two that you mentioned. Uh, the Utah Lake one, I can somewhat understand that one. The Severe River watershed, uh, maybe you have some explanation on that or rationale as to why they did that. It was actually more of an oversight than an intention. As the committee was talking about the boundaries for different watersheds, what we talked about was all of those areas that flow into this common area. So the common area of Utah Lake and flow into the Severe River. One of the things that we weren't aware of or didn't come to mind at the time is that there are versions in Utah County where uh, some of that drainage actually flows into the Jordan River. And so there are areas in Utah County that do not flow to Utah Lake. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rachel, I'm assuming, are there maps available showing these different areas and that type of thing? Is there information available on who who the uh, those who have been asked to help facilitate it are? You know, is that information on the website or on this? It, it is being developed right now, Mr. Chairman. We uh, did have maps that had our proposed boundaries, but they were based on just our river basin boundaries. And so once uh, Todd Stonely got to our attention that those boundaries weren't accurate with the description in the act, we are revising those maps to show the boundaries that are specific to the description in the act. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, board members, for Rachel? Okay, this is not a something that we'll be taking action on with a vote, but were there any public comments received on this, Randy, this particular agenda item? No, there weren't any comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank Rachel. You. Appreciate your efforts with this. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda will be a Lake Powell pipeline report and Joel, an update on it. And Joel Williams will be giving this to us. Joel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, I will try to share my screen with you all. Are you by chance able to see my presentation? Yes. Okay. Um, this will be a quick one. We have a few items just to, to let you give you an update on the Bureau of Reclamation is continuing to work on the supplemental draft EIS based on the 14,000 comments that were received, uh, re adding some, some additional information and reworking some things to come out with a supplemental draft. The next slide will show you a kind of a, a uh, preliminary time frame uh, for that. Uh, I'll mention that the water right change application is still underway. We have not heard a decision yet from the state, <clears throat> the state engineer on that. Um, so we're still looking, looking for a decision there and we'll update the board when we find out. As you recall from our last meeting, the programmatic agreement was uh, finalized and signed uh, by the board and has been finalized by the BLM. So that agreement is in place. The uh, public education and outreach is, is an effort that's, that's ongoing. You may have noticed um, with, I think, partly spurred on by the, the drought year we're having, but also partly because of issues on the Colorado River, that there has been quite a lot of 
media interest on, on Colorado River and on Lake Powell Pipeline. And so um, efforts, as always, are ongoing to try to inform and educate and, and keep the public informed as to, to what is going on and try to um, provide accurate information. Um, we will be continuing to work with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, there will We will need to have a 404 permits as well as a, a 401 certification from the state of Utah for water quality. Um, those we've been working closely with those agencies and don't anticipate any any issues, but that is an ongoing item of work. Um, <clears throat> another one similar to that would be the Fish and Wildlife Service biological opinion. That is kind of a standalone document separate from the EIS, and we have been working with uh, Fish and Wildlife, <clears throat> and uh, and we anticipate seeing a, a biological opinion um, along with the environmental impact statement. And then the last bullet on this page is the reclamation exchange agreement, which um, work is continuing on that. That agreement cannot be finalized until the conclusion of the NEPA process, but that is also just something that is, is st will still need to be completed in order uh, for this project to move forward. Um, this shows kind of the tentative schedule right now. It's, it hasn't has not been finalized. There are still a few things unknowns that are being worked out, but we do anticipate uh, from what we've discussed with reclamation that a, a supplemental draft EIS could come out this fall um, with a final EIS in the summer of 2022. Um, following that would be a record of decision. So it's, it's possible that late uh, 2022, we could be moving into final design and financing plan and, and um, probably a couple of years after that, um, starting construction. So the earliest possible um, delivery date for this project where we would be delivering water uh, earliest possible, I'd say 2030. Um, and uh, could could that even could be modified depending on how, how things go here through the EIS process, record of decision, and then obviously the design and financing portion. So there, we're, we're still a ways out, but these, these projects of of this magnitude and scale, they do take time to, to deliver. And we were impressed with the effort that is going forth uh, from the Bureau of Reclamation. They've got a great team working on this. Um, wanted to update the board briefly on, on how our contracts are looking. We often report on the Stantec contract. We recently uh, entered into amendment number 10 on this contract, as you would recall, uh, committing approximately $3 million uh, to get us through the next couple of years. And, and so we, we're in a good place with that contract. As I've mentioned previously, there is unspent money from the previous amendments that, that kind of rolls forward as a contingency in case there are additional items of work. Their Bureau of Reclamation is talking about possibly needing to do some additional survey work uh, for this next round. And, uh, and so it's nice to have that contingency, but, but they do tend to, to come in under budget on, on each of their, their forecasts. Um, the reclamation task order, we, we have been providing uh, financial assistance to the Bureau of Reclamation to, for the work they are doing on this project. They are in pretty good shape and, and will be able to work, I would estimate, a, probably an, an additional six months under the, the, the amount that the board has currently committed to the project. Um, and then similarly, Bureau of Land Management, we estimate they have in the neighborhood of about $300,000 left um, on, on their current agreement with us to, to cover their work. I would hope that that could get us through another six months as well, but, but it could be um, maybe mid-summer we come back to the board uh, talking about possibly needing additional funds for, for Bureau of Reclamation's work and Bureau of Land Management, but that's kind of where we're sitting right now. Um, are there any, any questions from the board members? Board members, any question you have you'd like to ask Joel? Okay, uh, this is not an item that we're taking any formal action on today. It's just an update. But Randy Staker, were there any public comments received on this item on the agenda? There were no comments. Okay, thank you, Randy. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Bear River Development Report. It's right-of-way acquisition update from Marisa. So, Marisa. 
Shalene, have you got that to share for me? Can, yes, can you I all do. hear me? Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the timing is impeccable. 2.50, I have to walk out to pick up someone. <laughs> So there's just one uh, property that uh, was closed on for the Bear River development um, since the last board meeting. Um, this is a property that is a commercial property right now. There's a warehouse, garage, office. It's all, you can see quite a, quite a big building. <clears throat> and uh, the appraised value was $435,000. That's what we paid. Uh, it's about two acres and the building itself, just under 8,000 square feet. Uh, we didn't, uh, the right of way plan uh, didn't need the full property, but it was impossible to, it was very difficult and probably more and more expensive to split the property and have to take the building down because of um, uh, what would be required by the county to have um, some room in sep trying to separate uh, a parcel into two. Uh, so it was a total take, and they are leasing back. The uh, plan right now is that they're leasing back long-term. So that is my report on that. Any Thank questions? you, Marie. Thank you, Marisa. Any questions for Marisa on this, board members? Okay, thank you, Marisa. Uh, we're not taking any formal action on this uh, Today is just an update, but Randy Staker, any public comments received on this? No, no comments. Okay, thank you, Randy. Okay, agenda, we're down to the director's report. Director Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I gave a lot of my report in, in the briefing meeting, but I'll just hit some highlights. Um, we gave a report to the uh, Natural Resources Ag and Environment Subcommittee yesterday. We gave a presentation on the current status of what we've been working on the last year, talked about the budget request uh, of the $18 million for dam safety from the C&D funds. Uh, there was $5 million for water efficiency in the governor's budget, and we're, we're working through that. We're watching the legislature, uh, as Candace gave the report uh, in, the, in the briefing meeting. Uh, I, I have more meetings up there this afternoon and more meetings tomorrow, and we'll continue to, to see where those all go as they continue to work. Um, Utah water users will be held in, right now, as it's planned, will be held in St. George, May 17th through the 19th. We'll get more information out to you. Put that on, on your calendars. Uh, the Drought Reporting Committee met uh, a week or so ago, and as Jordan showed you, we are in a very dry situation. Um, it was the, the Drought Reporting Committee recommended to Director Seed that he submit a letter to the governor for a drought declaration. I believe that letter is set up and we're waiting for action from the governor. Um, myself, Director Steed, and all the other division directors uh, met virtually with the governor this morning and had a very good discussion and dialogue with him. He is very engaged. He is very ha uh, hands-on and supportive of the things that we're doing. So it, it, that was a very good meeting to be with him. I just want to thank our staff for all the work that they do. As you've seen the presentations today and all the work that we're working on this meeting and last, all the wonderful things that they're doing. I want to reach out to each and every one of you and thank you for your service, for your support of our staff on, on the projects that you go out and, and the questions you ask. And personally, I want to thank you for your support and your vote of confidence today. Uh, I don't know if you could tell that was very uncomfortable for me uh, to take those kind of accolades and uh, what have you, because my staff are the ones that, that do the work. Uh, I just get to, to be the head and, and, and help them get the work done. So thank you so much. And that's all I have. Thank you, Director Adams. Uh, board members, do you have anything you'd like to ask our director? I would just like to echo what's been said today. I appreciate all of staff. There is a lot going on. I appreciate Director Todd also. There, it takes a whole team to make this happen. And I'm especially impressed in the day of COVID with the, some of the 
travel limits and things that we have going on that we're able to accomplish what's going on. There is a lot going on and and a lot of the future of our state hinges upon some of the things that are being decided right now. So appreciate the staff, everybody involved, appreciate the board, appreciate all of your efforts. Uh, next board meeting will be is scheduled right now for March 17th. We don't know yet, but it's most likely it will be another virtual meeting. So put that on your calendars, March 17th for next meeting. With that, appreciate everyone who's participated today. And we can hope and pray for more moisture and get out of this drought that we're in. Uh, let's go into the adjournment. Do we have a motion to adjourn our board meeting today? Mr. Chairman, I would make the motion we adjourn. Okay, have a motion to adjourn by Jim. Any a second? Kyle, I'll second that. Kyle seconds the motion. Any discussion on the motion to adjourn? If not, roll call. Bear River, Charles Holmgren. Mr. Chairman, I vote aye. Weaver River, Kyle Stevens. Aye. Salt Lake, Juliet Tennert. Aye. Provo River, Wayne Anderson. Aye. Green River, Randy Crozier. Aye. Upper Colorado River, Norm Johnson. I vote aye. Lower Colorado River, Jim Lemon. Yes. Okay, roll call vote has been unanimous in favor of adjourning the meeting. It's now 2.56 p.m. Uh, meeting is adjourned again. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>